At every stage, water is needed for every body function. Meet Barbara O'Neill, a devoted health advocate and nutrition expert who has dedicated her career to promoting natural wellness. In this enlightening presentation, Barbara shares her insights on a fundamental yet often overlooked aspect of health, proper hydration. As a seasoned nutritionist, Barbara understands the vital role that water plays in our bodies. She's passionate about educating people on how to achieve optimal health through simple, natural methods. Today, she'll be focusing on the importance of water consumption for overall well-being and the most effective times to hydrate. Water is essential for life, playing a crucial role in nearly every bodily function. It helps regulate our temperature, supports digestion, assists in toxin elimination, and contributes to healthy skin. Maintaining proper hydration is key to our health and vitality. Whether you're looking to increase your energy, improve your skin's appearance, or enhance your digestive health, understanding effective hydration strategies can make a substantial difference. If you're interested in learning more about how the simple act of drinking water can significantly impact your health, you've come to the right place. Let's dive into Barbara O'Neill's expert insights on this essential aspect of wellness. Let's listen to Barbara tell us about a man who came to her for help. So what was happening in his gut, he's drinking nothing between meals, which means the lining to his gut is very thin, which means the hydrochloric acid is breaking down the tissues. And remember the bacteria is an opportunist organism. And so what happened is the body started to, its own microorganisms changed role and came to the cleanup team, remember the garbage collectors, and they started to clean up the dead tissue and their name was called Helicobacter pylori. See why you have to ask why are they there? No wonder they find Helicobacter pylori in every case of stomach ulcer, they're there to clean up the mess. Barbara will now tell us more about our digestive systems. When we smell food and we start to chew food, hydrochloric acid, here's hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid is released. And hydrochloric acid connects with pepsinogen to release pepsin, which breaks down protein. But hydrochloric acid does something else. It's antifungal, antibacterial. And so it has the ability to wipe out these guys. So what happens to your client when he drinks water during a meal? And just as hydraulic acid is considering going down and wiping these guys out, he has a big glass of water. And what does water do to hydrochloric acid? It just dilutes it. So Helicobacter pylori is chomping away at the dead tissue and it goes, whew, that was close, chomp, chomp, chomp. What this man discovered is that he was drinking water at the wrong time. Do you remember I said to you earlier, I said, how much water do you drink a day? And he said, two liters. And because he was a little bit abrasive with all his answers, I decided not to push it anymore. So now, he drank early in the morning. He stopped drinking half an hour before his meal. That half an hour before the meal immediately thickened that mucosa wall. The water he had the day before fed the hydrochloric acid that's made in the liver. So let's have a look at what's happening now. Now being at the health retreat, he's drinking water at the right time between meals. His mucosa wall is getting thick. And then when he eats his meal, hydrochloric acid, which is not being watered down anymore, comes down and wipes out Helicobacter pylori. What a wonderful process. Who healed him? His body healed itself when given the right conditions. Now Barbara will tell us what she does when she consults with someone with Helicobacter pylori. When someone comes to me with Helicobacter pylori, one of the first things I do is increase their hydrochloric acid. Because if you increase the hydrochloric acid, remember what one of its roles is? Antibacterial, anti-yeast, antifungal. Where do we lose water? 
Dr. Batman Geheldhind, he we call him Dr. B, he found the first place that we lose water is the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. He also found that if you go down the gastrointestinal tract, you come to the pancreas. And the pancreas releases two hormones into the blood to help balance blood sugar levels. That's your insulin and your glucagon. But if you're dehydrated, those hormones aren't being made as they should be. So people that are dehydrated, that can be a contributing factor to diabetes. He also discovered that there are hormones released from the pancreas to finalize digestion. So there's pancreatic lipase to finalize starch digestion. Sorry, fat digestion. <laughs> there's pancreatic amylase. That's what finalizes starch digestion. There's trypsin and chymotrypsin that finalize protein digestion. Now they're all made out of water. If you don't have enough water, your, your digestion will be compromised. At every stage, water is needed for every body function. So no wonder Dr. Beat entitled his, bo his book, When a Person Has a Symptom of Disease, he says, must be one of the body's many cries for water. That's the title of his book. What happens to your brain without water? Our brain cells shrink when they don't have enough water. Headaches are common when we don't have enough water. Negative thought patterns can develop when our brain cells don't have enough water. Barbara will now tell us about what happens to joints without enough water. I can get my hand to go in and out like that without pain because around every joint there's fluid. And that fluid is synovial fluid and it is 99% water. In a state of dehydration, the body can take some water from there to maintain full blood volume in the major arteries and veins. And so if I have pain in there, maybe it's called arthritis, but actually maybe it's just a state of dehydration. What else in our body needs water? Our eyeball moves around in water. So we need water at every single step. How about our lungs? Also our lungs. Now at the bottom of our lungs, I'll draw you a small picture of our lungs so that you'll understand this. So here's our, here's our lungs here. That's one lung. So your tra trachea splits and comes down yeah. and then it splits again into little bronchioles. It's quite a process. And then at the end of every bronchial there's looks like a little bunch of grapes but they're alveoli. So at the end of the bronchioles you've got the alveoli and this is where the gaseous exchange takes place. Over every alveoli there's a little blood capillary network and it is in that blood capillary network where the oxygen is picked up from the alveoli and the blood drops the carbon dioxide and we breathe out. In every alveoli there's a minuscule droplet of water and because of the surface tension of water when you breathe out that little alveoli collapses which allows all the carbon dioxide, the majority of it, to be breathed out. So that now when you breathe in, you can breathe in more oxygen. In a state of dehydration, that little droplet of water is not as it should be, which means that doesn't totally collapse when you breathe out, which means you can't get your full quota of oxygen. But what also happens the body to prevent the water loss it can start constricting the uh, alve the the, um, the little bronchioles so that we don't lose water and so one of the signs of dehydration can be constricted constricted breathing the blood gets very thick in dehydration our blood needs to be nice and thin so that heart can pump it easily so that the little filtering units in our kidneys can can filter it with ease so water is needed for every single 
body function. Here are some easy, creative, and refreshing water recipes to make hydration more enjoyable and beneficial. Try infusing water with slices of lemon, cucumber, and mint leaves for a refreshing twist. For a detoxifying blend, combine water with ginger, turmeric, and a splash of lemon juice. Berry infused water using strawberries, blueberries, or raspberries can add a touch of natural sweetness. For a soothing option, steep chamomile tea bags in cold water overnight. It's important to avoid plastic containers for water storage and consumption due to potential chemical leaching. Instead, use glass or stainless steel bottles and containers. When preparing infused waters, use glass pitchers or jars to maintain purity and prevent any plastic-derived substances from entering your drink. By following these tips, you can enhance your hydration routine while minimizing exposure to potentially harmful plastics. So Dr. B's book, One of the Body's Many Cries for Water, is an important book because he goes into every body function and shows how important it is for us to be drinking adequate water. How do we know if we are drinking enough water? One of the signs that you're drinking adequate water is that your, your urine is clear. So when your urine is clear, that's, that's a fairly good sign that you're drinking enough water. Barbara will give us her final words. Because who's the doctor? We are. We are. Remember, your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.